Hello everyone, my name is Joshua Briscoe and today I'm here to talk to you about poverty and inequality. I am to ask you a few questions as well as respond them and hope you learn a thing or two. To start off, I want to ask you the, my first question of the day, the following. What is the concept behind the word poverty? What's behind it? Take your time to think. Now that you know what you think, I'll tell you what I think. Basically, poverty can be put into an even smaller word, which is lack. Poverty is the lack of pretty much everything you need to live a healthy life. And if you experience extreme poverty, however, you may end up with the inevitable cause of passing away, or however you call it, but a bit earlier than expected. Now, on to my second question. How can we solve poverty? Through social peace. What is social peace? Put it like this. Social peace is one way from keeping social life far from internal government problems by creating relationships between different sectors of society. To sum up what I just said, social peace tries to offer solutions to conflicts between different sectors of society. Why do I think it would work? Put it like this. Would you like to punch your friend? Would you like to spit on them? Give them a smack in the face? No. You'd never do that. It's the same with social peace. Now that both sectors of society have now made a sort of union, they don't want to hurt each other. They want to keep on building and have a stable social life away from internal government problems. A good example of this is the welfare estate. The welfare estate was established in Britain in 1945, just after the war. It was introduced to combat poverty after the war and to help people who are in such situations from cradle to grave. Very popular quote, in fact. This included free medical provisions under the NHS, National Health Service, improved public education, and, and better housing and working conditions. These sets of laws that created the welfare state were established by the British Labour Party in 1945 in the English general election after a landslide victory mainly because they promised to tackle poverty. To sum up what I said in those two paragraphs, the welfare state aimed to combat poverty and inequality after the war in recognition of all, all the efforts made by all social classes in wartime. The government wanted, to is, wanted it to establish equal rights between the working, middle and upper classes. In conclusion, we can see social peace here because all the different sectors of society have have worked together in a long and very painful war and now they all get privileged. Now they're all equal and they don't, they don't have to fight about resources. They've made a sort of union. Now, on to my third question of the day. I've said why poverty, what's the concept behind the word poverty? How can we solve it? But why is it so important? Basically, poverty is so important because it has such grave effects on people, such as cognitive problems and health problems. Cognitive problems are caused because many, many of the families that have kids that live in poverty can't afford any decent education. This leads to the kid that, that lives with the poverty-stricken family not knowing any of the basic concepts of knowledge. And you know what that leads to? Nothing positive. If, if your son doesn't know how to read or write, he's not... He's, not, he's gonna have real cognitive problems. And health problems are caused because the families that live in poverty can't afford no vaccinations, nor medicines, nor food, nor drink. This inevitably leads to hunger, thirst, and lots and lots of diseases. And we can't, they, and we can't say that's specifically positive. It's not. A good example of this is Haiti. Haiti is one of the most troubled countries in the world in terms of poverty and inequality. Hospitals overflowing with people, protests all round, cases of mass killings and a political crisis. It is recognised as the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, according to CNN.com. A reason behind this could be the 2010 7.0 magnitude earthquake in Haiti, which left a lot of people homeless. I don't know the exact numbers, but I know that it was a lot of people. According to worldbank.org, six million Haitians out of the 10 million that live in Haiti live on less than $2.41 per day. 
which is a record-breaking status. Does anyone know, you know how much $2.41 is in pesos? No? Well, it's approximately around 7,500 7, pesos, round there. And that's very little. That barely affords you any of the resources you need to live a healthy life. Barely. And according to CNN.com, again, 80% of the Haitian population live under poverty. So not only the people that live on less than $2.41 per day, but also the people that live under $5, $10, 15 That's poverty. In conclusion, this shows how poverty can have such a grave effect on people and on a country, basically. So if you could, try to help combat these situations. In recognition of Haiti, help an organization, donate to a charity, do something to stop poverty. Now, onto my penultimate question. I said I was going to talk about poverty, but also about inequality. Now, what is inequality? What is mainly income inequality? Here it is. When an economy grows, both sides of the income society grows as well. That means some of the poor people's income can grow, and they may be able to get out of poverty. And you may be thinking, yay, brilliant. Well, it's not as positive as you think, because the difference in money between the poor, now middle class, middle class's income, and the rich, even richer now, income is the same. This causes social tension, envy, jealousy, and this leads to a very big impact on the country that is happening. A good example of this is, oh, sorry. Well, doesn't matter, it's, it's South Africa. South Africa, after the partition between the white, white Dutch and British colonizers and the black original community from South Africa was abolished, Nelson Mandela came to power. His purpose, his mission, was to combat inequality because before then it had been a lot very unequal. Everything was going to the white people and basically nothing to the black people. It was very unequal. And Nelson Mandela's point, point his purpose, was to establish equal rights. But because he wanted to remain democratic, he wanted to make it 50-50, he didn't impose very strict policies of redistribution, wealth, and economic power. That means, even after Nelson Mandela's death, South Africa remains to be the most unequal country on earth. After what I just said, this is my last question of the day. You think, do you think, are you able to enjoy all your fancy holidays or your glamorous money-spending stuff, I don't know? when you've got people lying dead on the floor in I don't know where on earth, poverty in Colombia, the situation in Haiti, you think it's possible to enjoy all that with all the situations, with all the poverty and inequality on earth? Just think about it, because me and my family, we try to help, we try to combat poverty as much as possible by donating, and we've thought about this question, we've thought behind it, and we want you to think about it as well. And now to end, I want you to think about the policies that cause both poverty and inequality. And as Nelson Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it's done. Joshua Briscoe, thank you. <laughs>